Okay. Better. Let's put something on the uh, water. We're going to think about finishing this painting now. Let's move those brushes out of the way. I'm getting stuck. Flat brush for me. Um, this can be done again with the round brush. And I'll show you with, with the round brush in a moment. I'll do a bit of both so you can see. What I've done here, um, I've made up this warm mustardy color from the um, lemon yellow and the raw sienna. Okay, um, and it's sticky, it's claggy. You know, it's, so, it's nearly all paint, very little water. Now, <laughs> What you need to do is rehearse this brush movement in your head. You need to um, square up to your painting and see your hand, see yourself doing it before you actually do it. You know, I, I literally, literally do this. I have these little sort of pretend runs like that before I actually do it. So, because you do need, it does need to be smooth. It does need to be as horizontal as you can get it. It's really important. And you certainly don't want to be pushing the brush into the paper. It's not. It's just it's glancing over the surface like that. OK, you will need to reload it for each pass. OK, and you can go over where you've been already, but I tend to sort of rather. Uh, overlap my next one. And there it is. And it's mid ground in the water. Okay, I don't want you going too far up with this if you can, if you can help it. We will in a second go up a little bit higher, but this is mostly mid to lower water territory down here. If you're feeling brave, you could do it in reverse because you get a and you shouldn't do what I just did then and stop halfway across. Now then, now that I know there's not much paint on this brush, then I'll go up higher because that will be a better, thinner delivery like that. But I don't, I do stop anywhere near the, the, the watered line. Now then, with a bit of ultramarine blue and a bit of raw sienna again, okay, I've made a, a, a sticky green. This sticky green color, and this can go down here. Like that. That's enough, I think, for that. I'm going to show you how to do it with a round brush. Obviously, the, the rules of the brush loading are exactly the same. You need to. Uh, load the brush with very little water, lots of paint. And what I do then is um, the, the, I, I flatten the brush so it, be, it, becomes, it looks like a paddle. If I twist that so you can see, it's a flat. I've, I've squeezed it together like a flat paddle, okay? And that's why I use a flat brush, a square brush for this, because it, it's, it, you won't do exactly the same as that with a round brush, but that, 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 that's how I would do it. And I would just skim across the paper like this. Once you've used what's on that side of the brush, turn that paddle over and use the other side of the brush. But, um, but the, what the, um, perhaps uh, this can do, which actually the, the, the flat brush can do as well anyway, um, just picking up some more paint here. And I'm picking up a little bit of purple. That's ultramarine blue and alizarin crimson. Uh, what what I what you can do with the with the uh, round brush here is, um, as I say, and this can be done with a flat brush too. But it, it, I just go in then, and this is a bit wetter, mind you. This needs a bit more water. And when you look at your photo, you can see what I'm doing here. It's the area that is sort of dark, reflected areas like this, and very big, long um brush strokes like this all of the same size down here but if you were to take these slightly darker marks up further they thin out and get closer together they become a, a skinnier line and squeeze up together squeeze up close together so um 
all it really needs to be done here now is to deal with the houses and the rocks. And um, let's say we might want to do some vertical brush work over this. We'll see how that pans out. Um, everything, I always see everything that we can do, only an option. It's only an option, you can do it. Doesn't mean to say you have to do it in every situation, in every painting. Um, the more options, your, your options come from your abilities, you know, that the things that you've learned and, and stashed in your, in your little kit bag, um, those techniques, those skills that you've learned, they're all there. Um, you know, you just need to be um, reminded um, to, br to bring them out when you need them. Okay, so I'm just picking up a little bit of, uh, I think we can have a little bit of light red for these roofs very very weak a little bit of light red with probably a touch of a, light red's a very beautiful warm red earthy red um and but i tend to usually put a little bit of alizarin crimson uh in with it this is incredibly weak this okay this is earth uh, sorry light red and um it's incredibly weak i don't want to alter the value of the of the tone there i'll just paint that into that roof there and while it's still wet and and the chimney probably and while it's still wet i'll take a little bit of alizarin crimson which is a slightly well quite a lot cooler than than the light red just go at the top of the roof with that can't see the um roofs of the other buildings i don't think although sometimes it's, it's good to put a little bit of red in these areas um in the white of the actual building i'm gonna make these two buildings very weak yellow all i picked up then was the color we've just been using on the water but it's so weak and if you tease into those dark lines we made for the edge of the roof with this watery yellow, you'll get a really good effect on your on that wall of your house. And we'll do the same in a moment with the little boat. It's the beauty of applying, um, you know, um, let's go just put something there for a minute. This is the beauty of uh, putting paint on before you you manipulate watery mixes over the over the um, shapes that you're making. Um, a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue and red. Because I want that a little bit of a purple. Um, I'm incidentally, folks, I'm using this ultramarine blue I'm using is SAA paint. OK, it's OK. It, it, it's certainly better than some of those cheaper paints, but don't be fooled. It, it's it's not as intense as, say, um, Winsor Newton's artist quality paints. Um, so that's, you know, if you are using Winsor Newton artist quality paints, you probably don't want to be putting out quite as much paint as I'm, I'm putting in here. But there's a little bit of shadow under those, um, under that roof line there. There might be, I'm not going to go putting in huge amounts of shadow in this painting but a little bit will be required. Um, here's how to do rocks. This is a, a fail safe way of doing rocks. I mean, rocks come in all different colors and uh, et cetera. But this is a, a tiny weak amount, a very small weak amount of ultramarine blue. At least it will be once I've taken some off. Um, just grabbing some tissue here a second. Uh, this is ultramarine blue, and I'll just leave a slither to the tops of those rocks, just a slither of light of white paper, okay, the tops of those rocks there. Uh, but while they're wet, pick up a bit of um, raw sienna and go into the bottom, the base of those of those rocks and leave it. Let, let, let it do its own thing. Here's the boat. Not going to pick up any color, but I am going to pick up some water. I've left a rock out by there, by the way. Um, yeah, this is um this can be your size six brush or your size four brush. Um, and all that's in this brush is a bit of water. So I land the point of the brush where there's no paint, but I 
shimmy this back and forth till I see a little bit of that pink moving from the dark gunnel. As soon as it starts moving, I make sure it's all nice and smooth, that there's no texture there, okay? Take out any texture that, that, that might develop. Sometimes a little bit of a texture is fine. If it comes up from the bottom base dark line, that, that's usually okay. But if you've got sort of like isolated texture on shiny surfaces, it can look a bit, a bit, a bit wrong. Um, rock down here, same treatment as the other rocks, little bit of warmth, little bit of cool. Too much warmth, take some of that out. That's better. Um, okay, yeah, like I say now, all I'm going to do is, um, I'm gonna speed dry this, put a little bit of shadow on a couple of isolated areas. There'll be no big shadows in this. It's because the shadows are already in there by effect, you know. Um, So a little bit of ultramarine blue, a little bit of alizarin crimson, or even light red, if you want to make a purple. Yeah, it's a really weak purple from my um, ultramarine blue and a little bit of, uh, I actually used a bit of light red. And I'm just going to shadow corner like that. I think the light's coming down somewhere from our upper right. Might be a little bit of shadow under there. And that was one swipe of the brush and it's broken, a bit like how we did what we did on the water down there. Um, so you'd expect a shadow under here, just at the top of that little triangle, and a shadow under there. Let's bring a bit of shadow down on this side of the building, okay? Like that. Shadow under there. I don't know from where that would come, but maybe a bit of shadow just to the left hand side of that building. You could shadow that building completely because um, you won't lose it. But I think at the moment it's better to keep our attention to these two buildings rather than that one. So I'm going to mostly shadow that one like that. If you're feeling brave, um, the odd striation, the odd shadow falling over the land like this helps that diagonal again. A little bit more shadow under those, it's gone a bit weak. Um, edge of the water again, back the edge of the, um, you know, the, the shoreline. I think we're, we're done. Now, I did say painting those little uh, fence posts, so, the last thing I'm going to do is a couple of fence posts, a bit of white gouache. There's a couple of white things in my painting. One of them is that one there. I'll just smudge it slightly with my finger like that. There we are. Just to knock it back a little bit. Uh, yeah, the fence posts. Don't make too much of them. They're not, they're only, it's, it's quite a weak uh, mix of ultramarine blue and uh, raw sienna. Odd thing. And I wouldn't be tempted too much too quickly to put in rails, wires. You, you could do say, I don't know, one there, really fine little line there, a little fine line there. Don't go putting lots of horizontals where there's lots of verticals. It doesn't work, okay? The brain will fit, your, your viewer's brain will fit the, um, will fill in the, the gaps. They'll know that there's some, uh, there's probably wires attached to these um, these verticals. Okay, I think I'm going to take that fence line over to here. A little bit of white gouache. Um, and this is um, funny enough, when I took this photograph in poor tree in the Isle of Skye, it was late May. And um, this is what I mean about creating atmosphere. In the real world, you were aware of this type of thing. There was airborne particles. I, I get, I'm guessing it was insect uh, hatch off, because this is a really calm little um, harbour behind the actual town of Portree. And um, it was very evident in this morning sun, these, these just these little things glowing, um, particles in, in the air glowing. And, I was, um, and, then, and then on top of that, because it was the 
it was late May, I know it was late May because I was up there for my birthday, um, there was uh, flurries of snow from time to time. Amazing place, absolutely beautiful. So there we are, folks. There, there's, um, there we are, that's the, I think, finished job. You know, we could look at our paintings tomorrow as I might and sort of say, well, you know, is there too hard an edge somewhere? Um, if there was, it might be that one there. With a damp finger like that, I can sort of soften it slightly. Just the, you know, the dotting of the uh, I's, crossing of the T's. Put the mount around it. And there's a, you know, a really bright uh, painting. There's sun, sunlit foreground, nice and jolly. Um, really does remind me of the place that it was. It takes me back. And um, if you want, I can zoom in uh, and then I will come and have a chat. Let me just zoom in so you can see it. It will go out of focus for a moment. I'll show you an area of it. Oops, it's playing. I think that's fairly accurate. Fairly well focused, I mean. Please consider subscribing to my channel and if you want immediate notifications as to when I upload a new video then please remember to also click on the bell icon.